Hey, look what I have here. It is Apple's new form of microtransaction scheme. It is MacBook Pro in-app purchases, which has the touch bar given. Oh, I'm sorry. That wasn't supposed to be a statement. That was supposed to be a question. Let, let, me, let me do that part again. Which has the touch bar gimmick? Okay, wait. The touch bar is a gimmick. Is a, is a gimmick. Is a gimmick? Is... Anyway, I am here to review MacBook gimmick. Damn it! Two thousand sixteen MacBook Pro. The MacBook I'm about to review is fifteen inch model that has two point seven gigahertz quad core Intel Core i seven processor with sixteen gigabytes of RAM, five hundred and twelve gigabyte of storage, and two gigabyte Radeon Pro four hundred and fifty five GPU. The unboxing experience is pretty much same as all previous MacBooks. However, it doesn't come with a power extension cable, probably because that would make this MacBook way too professional for us. 15-inch MacBook comes with 87W USB-C power adapter, USB-C cable, the usual manuals, and the stickers. You can remove all the USB ports, memory card slots, everything, but I dare you to remove this, Apple. Here we go. And the first new feature introduces itself right there. MacBook turns itself on when you open the lid. Wow, it looks really nice. Ah, the new laptop smell. Okay, I was getting ready to make fun of this, but this looks really cool. Look at that giant trackpad. I mean, falling in love with this MacBook wasn't part of the plan. And yet, it happened at first sight. Compared to my mid-2012 MacBook, it is thinner. Thanks to its thinner bezels, even though the screen size is the same, the laptop is smaller. Yes, it is still not pitch black, but at least it is space gray, and not that tasteless person's Honda Civic gray. The screen is brighter and less reflective, so it is a little easier to see while you're outside. So let's put this MacBook next to my late 2014 4GHz i7 iMac and mid-2012 2.6GHz i7 MacBook Pro and run some speed tests. In Geekbench 4, 2016 MacBook Pro came really close to iMac in CPU test results. In Geekbench 4 GPU tests, it was in between iMac and 2012 MacBook Pro. In Cinebench OpenGL and CPU tests, 2016 MacBook Pro was in between again. However, during the disk speed test, 2016 MacBook's result was unbelievable. So I thought I should export the same Final Cut Pro project from all three computers to see what all those numbers meant. The project took 9 minutes and 17 seconds to be exported from 2012 MacBook Pro. iMac 2014 exported it in 7 minutes and 42 seconds. And the brand new $3050 2016 MacBook Pro exported it in 8 minutes and 43 seconds. Only 34 seconds faster than 2012 MacBook. And 1 minute and 1 second slower than the iMac. Playing Team Fortress 2 was easy. MacBook Pro had almost constant 60 frames per second performance, which is great compared to 2012 MacBook Pro, but not even close to iMac's frame rate. Now let's see how the new speakers sound. Hi Tim, where you going with a phone in your hand? Don't you know you may a fall in a lake? Chasing doggy bears. Chasing doggy bears. Chasing the quadrant. Chasing our compound. Chasing doggy bears. Chasing doggy bears. 
So yes, the new MacBook Pro sounds better than the old MacBook Pro. Also, I'd like to point out that what you'll hear in real life will be a little different than what you just heard. For example, iMac sounded a little too bass, but in real life iMac is the most natural sounding one. 2012 MacBook is horrible and 2016 MacBook is fine. Now let's talk about the touch bar and the touch ID. There is no other way of saying this. The touch bar is a gimmick. It looks like an iPad 2 or an ATM's touch screen. I've been using this MacBook Pro every single day ever since I got it. And I've never seen an advantage of having the touch bar. Don't get me wrong, I like having it there and it doesn't get into the way of my function keys, so it didn't change my experience for better or for worse. It seems like a desperate attempt from Apple to appear cool. And if you're kind of person who doesn't look at the keyboard, you will forget that it's even there. On the other hand, having touch ID is great. But the question is, why wasn't it there already? So when you want to log in, you simply put your finger over the Touch ID and it selects your profile and if you're logging in for the first time it brings up the password window. So your crazy lover cannot log in using your finger while you're sleeping. Now one interesting thing is turning off. Accessibility options. Sleep restart shutdown selection. It doesn't appear when you're using this button. Which is one of the few weird things Apple did with this MacBook Pro. They even removed the startup chime. You know that F sharp you pay attention to while you reset the PRAM, etc. They actually removed so many things. There's not much left in this laptop. So maybe we should call it a left top. Except for MagSafe. I'm probably one of the few that never liked that magnetic power cable connection. So having a proper USB-C connection that will stay in its place is perfect for me. So when you plug the charge back in, while your computer is off, turns on again. Why are you turning on? Now let's see what happens when I use Photoshop. I'd like to edit one of my idols, not this guy. Mm, no, not this guy. Ah, this guy is good. See, I can hit open here. Let's just duplicate that layer. See, the giant trackpad makes this very easy, even though I'm not still used to it. I'm still using a tiny bit area. Let's go to feather, five pixels. That is good. Let's copy this, paste it, and content aware fill. On fill, let's do it. That didn't look much content aware. Maybe just, let's just move it a little bit like that. Try it again. Ah, much better. Mask this part off. Looking really good. All right. This looks, this looks pretty good and it was really easy to prepare. Now I'd like to add a text. And of course, finally, let's give this a background. Let's go to fill and fill the background of fill. Perfect. See, in minutes, nothing was weird. The keyboard was really nice. Also, typing with the new keyboard is very easy. The new keyboard is actually my favorite thing on the new MacBook Pro. It is much, much better than the previous MacBook keyboards. Can make the text bold. Click on the line. Now I already have this USB-C to USB dongle. I mean adapter. But that's not enough. Because I still need the HDMI output for my tests. Paying $53 on top of a $3050 laptop brought that Guns N' Roses song to my mind. Welcome to the jungle. I'm gonna watch you bleed. Welcome to the jungle. Welcome to the dongle. I wanna hear you scream. I like the new MacBook Pro. I think, I think it's really nice. But for me, since it's a little faster than my 2012 MacBook, 
and it is slower than my iMac. I really can't find a $3,000 reason for owning this. I mean, think of it this way. All these products they have, the fantastic iPhone, the iPad, this, iMac, the Mac Pro. And what do people do with them? They put it in ice and throw it from top floor of a building to see if it breaks. This is what they can do with those products. They don't know how to use these products. They, like, they connect four chargers to see what this will do. But whose fault is this? When you go to Apple Store, let's go down here. Let's say you want to get this. 8 gigabytes of RAM is included. If you want to get 16 gigabytes of RAM, they want $200 more. $200 more. 16 gigabytes of RAM is $94 on Amazon right now. You're charging $200 more. And on top of that, you're taking back that 8 gigabytes of RAM that is initially included in the setup. Isn't that kind of evil? The way you put everything inside this MacBook and I cannot change the RAM, I cannot change the uh, storage, I cannot change anything. So what else can I do? Of course, I'm going to put this in ice and throw it off a building. Why doesn't this have at least one USB port? Just one. I don't think that's what stay foolish means. I think this is just idiotic. Why can't I put SIM card in this like an iPad? Why doesn't the iPad have a calculator? Let me tell you Apple. You just put an app, you tap on it, a calculator app. It opens in a tiny window that floats on top, that stays on top. And then when you go to your other app where you want to do the calculation, you drag it around and then you use it as a calculator. It's that simple. iOS 11, let's see that. Why isn't there force touch on the trackpad? Why isn't there haptic feedback? My love towards the new MacBook Pro lasted less than a butterfly's life. So if you excuse me, I have a laptop to return. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode and I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that subscribe button. I must have a subscribe button somewhere here on the screen. Hit that subscribe button and join the world domination. And please let me know what you think about 2016 MacBook gimmick in the comment section below. Um, nom, 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 nom. And until I see you the next time, take really good care of yourselves. And horse chocolate.